Hello, tea timers. So today I am drinking my afternoon blend and um, I'm drinking it in my little Will cup that he gave me when he was, you know, youngish. Because <laughs> I miss him because ah, I miss him. He's all the way in England. But um, anyway, so happy tea time. And um, my husband Don's here and he's drinking his coffee as usual. Yes, yeah. that's correct. And uh, so I'll take my sip. Oh, it's really hot today. A little bit of cream. Hmm. So, hi. Um, oh, I have questions. Yeah, we got lots of questions. Um, okay. I'm a oh, happy September. Ta -da! Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Uh, I'm a nerdlinger says, oh, this is from the video about uh, a few weeks ago about you and uh, age. Uh -huh. uh, they say, no one is getting old here, just wiser and cozier. Mm -hmm. So says the tea timer's law, and so it shall be. <laughs> uh, then That's the question right. Is, sometimes I, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm, I'm learning more. I'm, I, I wouldn't change being this age for any age. It's, it's really, um, every time I get, I think like, oh, oh, now... I really am settling into me. I, I feel very peaceful and, and happy about it. Although sometimes I, I'm not, I'm not kidding, guys. Sometimes you have a little more oof, like when you st sit or stand, or you know, a little bit like, <laughs> you know. I always used to be quite slender, but now when I when I sit down, I can feel I can feel my my belly plopping out. <laughs> and, uh, doesn't matter. I can try to suck it, in, but it's, it's it's not comfortable either way. It's not comfortable sucking it, in, and it's not comfortable lying gently on my thighs. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Uh, oh well, gravity's having its way with me. Okay. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> more than you wanted to know. <laughs> so the questions were. Oh, the question. Okay. So has your kitchen been repaired? Oh. <laughs> And when can we expect another exciting <laughs> cooking episode? Oh, and the uh, third okay. thing. Oh, we oh, okay. answer those questions first, okay. and I'll ask you that third thing. No, the kitchen hasn't been repaired. Don and I are in the minority in as we're so blessed that we're able to, we, that we don't have front-facing jobs or that we don't have to, that, you know, well, we're kind of retired. <laughs> so, um... So I think that the less you do in terms of like still being careful, we're waiting until we get our, the, the booster with the, the new booster that has the, for BA4, BA5. Um, and I'm hoping, hoping that that's going to do the trick. Now I know that they say it's just going to be with us and that's fine, but I'm just, I'm just hoping because there isn't, um, so far I've been, you know, I read the news and stuff. I don't hear of a, new real concerning variant that's taking over from them so i'm really hoping it's going to be done so anyway the long and short of it is don and i are still um a, a little a little bit okay a lot cautious we're i think the only person i know who's more cautious is my sister becky but we're we're really really being because we can and we're so blessed and we're so fortunate that we can but it's weird it's like the you get used to not right you get used to like being home and drinking your tea and wow I didn't realize this is a dress from Jen I get Jen's hand-me-downs she gave me this last time I went to visit her oh whoa hold on <laughs> there's a button button's a little too low for grandma <laughs> okay, there oh my goodness okay <clears throat> I should have just done that discreetly. <laughs> I shouldn't have gone, whoa! <laughs> I should have just been like, la, 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 la. And just kept talking and doing my button up. But anyway, um, what was the question? Oh, so have we? Okay, so there's things. I have a list of things that are that I just started making of that I'm going to have done once the pandemic's over. But the pandemic's probably not going to be over, but once it's a little bit easier. So once we have our, our, um, the, our good immunity, because it stays good for around three months, really strong, then I might try to book some, oh, 
the dog's coming in. <laughs> Did you hear that? Shh, shh, shh. Like that. That's her. She pushed the door open. Hi, honey. Hello, hello. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Come on, then. Oh, going around that. Here we go. Okay. So, um, so, um, we're going to wait until, yes, right, oh, right in your mouth. Not in the mouth. Here's the chin's good. Um, yeah. So we're going to wait until then. And, um, I think we'll just wait. Okay. It's, okay. Long and short of it is, yeah, the hole's still there and it's not fixed. You're going down? The hole's still there. It's not fixed. And because the thing is, is we have to get a plumber in to put the thing back. I'm trying to figure out if I should, uh, boy, I'm all over the place. I'm trying to figure out if I should have the, them just tile over it and not have a pot filler. Because that, do. well, we don't know for sure. But it's kind of like when it went shooting off and the water came shooting out, like if you do that again, it might do that again. So maybe we'll tile over it and then we don't need the plumber or we have the thing and we tile over it, but we don't use the faucet thing. You have a sink so close to the sink. We have a sink. We have two sinks. <laughs> like we don't. So anyway, that's, yes, that is not fixed yet. And um, in normal life, it would be fixed, but because we don't know how long it'll take. And also because everybody else is kind of out and about and living their lives, you feel a little more like to be like, um, uh, could, could you please mask? <laughs> you know, we've had to have a few times where we've had to have somebody in and we just open the windows and have the HEPA filters going, but yeah, we're, we're still scaredy cats. I hope it pass. I hope it's, I'm hoping that this next little bit is gonna be like, Ah, and then we get back to kind of a semblance of normal. Everybody else is. Like everybody else, the entire world is pretty much. Um, just not us. <laughs> Yet. Yet. We'll get there. We're, get, we're getting there. We're yeah. doing way more than we used to. And then there was a third thing. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, oh, we, well, we won't, I don't know when we'll do another cooking episode. Oh, sure. another cooking episode? <clears throat> well, okay. So <laughs> I did a couple cooking episodes, right? I did a couple. And then the thing happened with the pot. And then... We did one before it, and then there was a hole in the thing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm too embarrassed. I'm too embarrassed to do another cooking thing because everybody will be like, why is that hole still in your wall? <laughs> That's embarrassing. But it's still there because we're still scared. Like, yeah, I did the thing with Jen. I went and did the Chucky thing. But, you know, that was me scampering out and doing it out of love for my sister because otherwise I would not have hopped on a plane. I wouldn't have been on a set with my mask off. <laughs> I wouldn't, I mean, you know, goodness gracious. Oh, I don't know. Did I tell you guys? If you, when you see the Chucky thing, if you see the Chucky thing, which you might not be scary people watchers like me, but if you look closely, you'll notice in my blue dress, one of my boobs is bigger than the other <laughs> because I didn't have a purse and I didn't have any pockets, but I wanted to keep my mask on as long as I could until it's time to shoot. And then when it was time to shoot, they'd say, okay, we're gonna get, and I'd take off my mask because they had these um, screen things, but that doesn't keep aerosols from coming in. I'd take off my mask and I'd shove it in my bra. <laughs> so, well, you actually shouldn't be, when you're watching the show, you shouldn't be looking like, oh, whatever boot is bigger than the other. Anyway, well, where, did, how, what was the question? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the way it always goes. Oh, the third thing was, will there ever be a part two to the porcupine book? I read it and shared it Aww. and everyone loved it. Aww. We want more of Jack, Simon and Tessa. Aw, no, there's not going to be a part two. But, you know, in that book, oh, I might have told my tea timers before, but there was quite a bit like milking the cow, feeling her against my cheek, the warmth of her when I milked her in the morning, early in the morning, or the chickens, and as you know, coconut zigzags in there, my pet chicken, and um, getting the moss that we would get to, who knew, like in those days, I didn't know, like, oh, you aren't supposed to, whatever, moss takes so long to grow, it was just like, we were really poor, and it was, it was cheaper than getting hay and stuff in there, and so, because we could just get it all the time, and it just kept growing in the forest, but, um, now I'd leave it because it's so pretty in the woods. Um, and they, but the, the chickens really liked it when I'd layer out all the green moss on the floor and, and uh, 
in, in their little stall things. And then they would come in and because in the moss, there would be lots of bugs and they'd scratch and they'd peck and they'd scratch and peck and eat all the bugs out of the moss. Um, and then the thing where they did the snake that, that I told you guys tea timers, I think way back when I told you about the book, but that, that also was, um, that was a dinner we had <laughs> and that's what happened with it. So yeah, there's lots of me in all my books. In all my books, there's lots of me and, um, and some there's more than me because <laughs> some, the first one's just like biography. Okay. Um, let's see. Dry Inspection says, um, Hi, Dry Inspection. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, hey, hey there. I've been loving these videos. They're lovely for when one uh -huh. needs to have some peace and calmness, for which I thank you. Uh -huh. I did have a question. Since I recently binged Bomb Girls and it's been a while since it's first aired, do you think that if Bomb Girls was to be rebooted or continued mm -hmm. nowadays, that you and other people such as Ali and Jody would be happy to come back and continue to act in their roles? I think we, they were talking about getting it. And I know Adrian Mitchell was trying very hard to get it uh, somewhere else. And it looked for a moment that we had the best fans in the world who were really campaigning for it to be re-picked up because it, a lot of people really, really loved that show, like really loved that show. And I would definitely have done it. But I think now too much time has passed. And I think Jody's in something some show where she plays a president or something. And um, so I think that, um, I think Allie would probably be happy to come back. I would, but I, I really don't, I think it's past its time. I don't think that they will pick it up or bring it back because what they wanted to do, what, what um, Michael McLennan and Adrian had talked about doing was to continue on where we were and bring it right through when like the men come back from the war and then how all the women's uh, roles have to change again and all of that stuff. So they had a whole thing where it would continue on, but you couldn't really do that now because we're all around eight, 10 years older. I don't remember how long, I think we started 10 years ago. <clears throat> so I, I don't think that you could because um, not only am I 10 years older, but I look 10 years older or eight years older or however older, even more so because the pandemic, like, Right now, uh, you, I'm looking in the phone and yeah, I, I look fine. <laughs> I also look fine, but that's because we've got good light in here, but you get me out just walking around and you know, it's funny, Don Mancini, who did the Chucky thing every once in a while, he would send me a photo from the set and because he thought, oh, you know, he liked it or did a good job of the scene and I, look at it and I'm really happy with my age, but I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, I, I sure got old. <laughs> Cause I, I'm not used to see pictures of myself. Um, and this is different cause it's in certain lighting, but when you're acting, <laughs> your face does kind of things that might not be the most attractive, but, but it's in a, it's animated or whatever, not animated, like acting, but you know, it's, feeling stuff. And when you're feeling stuff, you, you know, you might not look your best. Well, no, you look your best. You look your best to somebody who's feeling stuff. Okay. So, oh, one oh, second. it's um, 13 and a half minutes. Okay. What, one more question. Okay. One more. Hi. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, La, La Dine Swearage. This is one thing I'm really happy about. <laughs> when Don does it with me, he does the the, word, the names because yeah, I can't I'm, I'm I a, can't pronounce I'm them all. Well, I know, I'm but a, then it's not me being like, oh, you know how I always go, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. I am wrecking your name. Okay. La Dine Swearage. Um, question. Uh, do you read Don's books and does he read yours? If yes, do you each cr cr critique the other's works mm -hmm. or... The other question was, in your books, do you find that you base characters on people you know or have interacted with in the past? 100%. I base, I, I use a lot of times people that I know or situations that have as a kicking off place. Or I'll be writing and I'll be like, ooh, that's a good place to put in, you know, this or that's a good place to, you know, so I use in throughout, like in this one, is it this one? I think this one, there's an incident with Saran Wrap. Yeah, that happened. 
that is same thing heartbreaking um so it's like um you use pieces of things so or you know i used my sisters that kind of where my sisters jen likes to help get me you know looking dressed up for my when i have press and stuff like that which i really appreciate and um you know or my other sister is an artist so i put an artist in oh i think it was cliff's edge um so i use bits and pieces and then in um the runaway heiress i based the one guy the um the business manager on somebody I knew so the physicality and then that person just took off so you start it and I also based the the guy Mick on somebody that I knew that I'd worked with and but you use it as a kicking off place just to give yourself a kind of and then it takes off and they take off and they go in a whole another direction and um oh what was the other part of the question? Do we read each other's books? Oh, yes, we read each other's books. Well, okay. So I read Don's book after he finishes. Don usually has me read his first, like, four chapters. You know, first when he's doing it, or first chapter and then up to, like, kind of the fourth chapter, just as he's kind of like, or if he has it, he'll brainstorm with me. But he gets to a certain point where he'll ask me, and, you know, I'm very opinionated. So it's... um good for him because it's like, okay, that's a no, that, or yes, this, you're on the right track. Go, go, go. And then he gets that and he's like, yeah, I'm going. And then he goes, goes, goes. But he doesn't usually like to have me in the process after the first few chapters and other than to brainstorm and say, okay, this is what's going on. Whereas for me, I'll, I'll just start writing and I'll write until I kind of feel it. I'll brainstorm with them, but I always have him read my stuff before I send it to my agent or my and and or an editor or he'll always be my first reader and if I'm having uh, I'll brainstorm with him as well just give him kind of the things but I like it kind of to be my world and to do my thing I might the first bit I might like I'll be like I might have if I write the first chapter I might sometimes have him read but sometimes it's more like I just want to play and then um and then he'll give me notes and then I go through all the notes. Whereas Don, he has me right in the beginning, but he doesn't have me in the process and I don't get to read it until it's out in book form. So, but we help each other a lot with our writing. Although right now he's playing music and I'm cooking and eating. <laughs> I'm taking a pause from writing, um, which is kind of cool because I haven't taken a pause from writing. I've been writing for four, 32 years. And I don't know if it's going to be a permanent pause or if it's going to be, you know what happened? I wrote, you know, a lot. I've written an awful lot in the last few years. I did, you know, all of the, all of those for Penguin. And, um, and then I wrote something over the pandemic after I'd finished doing uh, Runaway Heiress and the edits for that. And um, I worked and worked and worked on it but it just wouldn't behave. And I know I talked with you guys about the struggle and everything and I'd do this and it would turn this way and it would turn that way. And it got kind of dark because of course everything that's going on. And um, then I sent it off to my agent and I got notes back and the notes were a lot like I'd have to redo, but I was kind of like, I wrote kind of, I guess maybe what I needed to write during that time. Um, and I just was tired because I spent a lot of time just in front of a computer. And I think because of the pandemic, because you write and you write and you write. So you might write for seven hours and then you're thinking about it and you're making notes and you do rewrites and rewrites. And, you know, there's just a lot of uh, work and love that goes into it. But I had worked on that for a year and a half. And then I'm like, I, I think I'm trying to twist it into a shape that it shouldn't be in. And I don't know that I want to go down the path of making it into the shape that perhaps it needs to be because that's not in this sort of wheelhouse anyway. And to shift it and try to make it into this sort of wheelhouse then isn't why I felt the need to write because I think all sorts of family and childhood issues were coming up and um, mixed feelings about my my mom and her, her passing and things that happened. And so... I've just put it away. And then I, I started thinking, I've got so many manuscripts that I've written and spent years on that I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to show this to anybody. And I put away. And um, and I don't know that I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm never going to put them out there. 
some of them because they're just too, too personal, which is I know what writing is about, but they're just too, before I learned how to really write fiction and other ones I wrote and I rewrote and rewrote and I love them, um, but I don't want to, it's a lot of work to do your own book and I don't really want to, I wrote what I wanted to write, but they don't necessarily have to be out there. So I'm not sure. Right now, I'm not sure. Right now, I'm, I want to just like, I don't know, the pandemic made me feel like life is so precarious and I just want to go for walks and wobble around on my bike. Although I get nervous about, because the emergency rooms are full about breaking my legs. So I've taken a pause on the bike riding because um, <laughs> Paul, Paul, for one of our tea timers, said that he got very badly injured on his bike. <laughs> and when I read that comment, I'm like, oh, honey, um, <clears throat> I'm a really bad bike rider anyway. I think I'm going to hold off until the emergency rooms aren't crowded and it's a 10, 12 hour wait. Because what if I break my leg? So I'm walking and I'm, I'm doing the dance exercise <laughs> and I'm reading books and I'm cooking and I'm you know, talking to family and friends and just, I don't know, like living the life of Riley. I don't know sure what that means, but it, to me it means a happy life. Oh, wow, we're way past time. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.